There you go. Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's. I think I hit my keyboard and then paused the video. So welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen. We are super excited today to really talk about and celebrate Asian Heritage Month with a legend, a Canadian legend, restaurateur, chef, author, Ted Talker, Chef Vikram Vij. Thank you again for being today on our show. Pleasure. Namaste and peace to all and happiness uh, in these tough and trying times. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chef. I'm going to call you Chef because we have a food show. We're going to call you Chef if that's okay with you. Because you are a, uh, you are an industry changer in my mind in Indian food. And first of all, I've ate at your restaurant. I had a pleasure of doing that before COVID hit. One of the best meals, and I don't just say this. I was just saying this earlier with him. I was chef. I don't just say that, but it was really cool. And and it was funny when I got to meet you in person was your passion. And I have met thousands of restaurateurs over my 32 years in the industry. You're the most passionate chef uh, I've ever met. I, 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 I like you are to walk around and I'll never forget. It was raining outside and you had to go show us the front and all your little, I don't know, the little things on your, on your, on your, on your, um, front of your restaurant and you're so passionate about those and just everything that in there had a reason and purpose and it was just beautiful so uh, yeah thank you again for being on today and helping to celebrate Asian Heritage Month so I got a lot of questions I got a lot of questions for you a yes a lot of questions and things like that but let's let's discuss a little bit about your journey and how you became where you are today let's start back then and how did you become a chef and a restaurateur and all this crazy world you live in <laughs> well you know I, I grew up in india so i'm a i'm a somebody who who loves food and has always enjoyed it and but i also love people i'm a people's person i'm a people pleaser i have always enjoyed uh talking to uh, to people so when i was a young kid you know there are people uh who shy away from when somebody comes to their house i was the kind of person who would like come out and say oh Talk to me. I, I want to. I, you know, I want to be seen. I was always the showman in that sense. You know, um, sometimes my mom used to say, or you know, I call myself a joker. You know, you're, you're always making other people laugh, basically. And so uh, I actually wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a Bollywood actor. And uh, one day, my father crushed my dreams by saying, "His son is not going to become an actor. He doesn't want his son to become an actor." And, you know, at that time, India was going through so much turmoil of um, uh, political unrest. And there was, uh, you know, fighting going on between uh, Hindus and Sikhs at the time. Um, and it was time to get out. And I went to, to Austria to become a chef. I got my chef's papers from Hotel Management School in Salzburg, uh, which was a three-year program. And then, you know, it's funny in life, sometimes you look back and you think, oh, my mm -hmm. God, um, at that time, it was such a pain, but in the end, it became a positive thing. As an Indian passport holder, I wasn't allowed to work for more than six months um, at one place. So I would have to go to Germany, then I would have to go to you know France and Austria and different parts of the world every six months in order to be able to get a working visa. But then wow. that gathered a lot of experience in French cooking and Italian cooking and different parts of, of the cooking of the world. And then I had this huge opportunity, which was very simple, basically. I was cooking in Austria and uh, the general manager of the Bam Springs Hotel was having dinner and he wanted to have something spicy. He had gone skiing and he was tired. He was Hungarian and he wanted to have some something spicy. So obviously, you know, the Austrian food is very simple and bland, salt and pepper and, you know, extra butter and everything else. Um, so the kitchen came to me and said, hey, listen, um, you know, this guy wants something spicy. And I had some goulash soup and I spiced up Indian style. And he was really happy with it. And he said, you know, young kids like you who speak English uh, should come to Canada because it's a beautiful country. And I went to... Uh, Six months later, I applied to him just because I'd heard Canada was this great country for, of immigrants, um, that people were going to be very friendly. Um, and he gave me a visa for six months and I came to Bam Springs Hotel and I worked there for three and a half years. 
before I decided to come to Vancouver and uh, open up my own restaurant. And the reason why I decided to open up a restaurant is because I felt that Indian food never got its respect, what it actually should. Our spices are as unique as any Italian or as French or um, any other Californian cuisine. Our spices are as unique and, and different. And I felt that we were like, just, you know, we were called ethnic, you know, suddenly, uh, you know, like we were just clumped together as Asian food or, or, or Mexican food. Like it was like, and I really felt passionate about it. And I stood up um, and, and you know, I, I worked in great kitchens. I've worked in great places, great restaurants. John Bishop was one of them. Um, and uh, I really felt that uh, it was time to elevate the cuisine and the culture and my heritage to a different level altogether. And hence the journey of Ridges. And here we are remaining focused, loving what we do. Uh, and on top of it, most importantly, keeping the passion of food and wine and, and bringing people and showing them that good food and good um, spices are as important as love and compassion. Yeah. You mentioned that in your TED talk. You, you talk about that, the love, and you must have love and passion and care for your food. And, and it, it shows if you ever eat at your place and you see that within everything that you do. It's absolutely incredible. And was, was there anyone else at that time when you came in and said, we're going to, you know, elevate the Indian cuisine? Was anyone else trying to, or are you the first? I would say we were the first. Um, I, I don't think I can ever say I was the only instrument per person in there. I mean, there was a whole team at Bridges that was responsible for uh, working hard and remaining focused. And then my Shanti team and everybody else. I don't want to take it away. I don't want to ever say it's only me. It's, it's you know, the whole team that puts the whole whole food together. But the vision was that um, same respect and love to the cuisine uh, should be given to every human being because we've always believed that, you know, we're all equal and we need to be treated with respect and love. Um, Having said that, uh, yes, I, we were the first ones that took the presentation to a, a, a different level altogether. We presented the food nicely. You know, I was very, I'm passionate about wine. I love wines, basically. And so I created, we created this, you know, food and wine pairing programs where people just absolutely were able to taste Indian food with wines. And I had some great mentors, um, you know, who, who were responsible for I was just uplifting and respecting what I was doing and and what I was planning to do. So, is that normal? Like, is that new also, or was that new normal to pair wine with Indian food? Traditionally, you would never drink um, wine with Indian food. Traditionally, you would drink scotch or beer beforehand, okay. and then when you when you sit down to eat, you know, because you're eating with your family and everything else, you normally would not drink wine at the table. I mean, now it's changed, but when I was growing up, you know, men would always drink beforehand and then they would come to the table and they would drink water or, or lassi or anything else. So uh, to create that food and wine pairing to say, okay, let's try the local wines. Let's try the <clears throat> Gibbetsterminas and the Chardonnays and the New World Marshal Foch and Cabernet Sauvignons uh, was something brand new and it was created, uh, you know, just by learning and understanding the nuances of, of uh, the food and the wine culture. And I'm a really big believer of the fact that, you know, we have a beautiful wine industry in our backyard. You know, when you when you look at Langley and when you look at uh, those areas, the Fraser Valley, I mean, the beautiful wineries, you know, Okanagan does a fantastic job. Niagara Falls, St. Catharines does a fantastic job of, of creating great wines. So my point was, why do I need to drink wine from France or from Australia or from Spain when I have beautiful wines that are available in my backyard? And that's what I wanted to support. I wanted to support the local farmers, the local you know, winemakers, the purveyors, and create that atmosphere. So especially at Maishanti, we only serve uh, British Columbia wines and British Columbian oh, beers yeah. because we have delicious uh, produce available to us right here. That's, that's, that's awesome, first of all. That's wicked. So, um, 
I guess so on that, which is amazing, but you t- I wanted to ask you about your dish. Chef, what's that? What's this lamb popsicles? Can you explain that a little bit about what this dish is? Because this is a this is your dish. Yeah, so you know it was it was weird. Um everybody used to come to the restaurant and ask for butter chicken. Because that is what portrayed yeah. as Indian food. It's like going to a Chinese restaurant and asking for general, you know, Tao's chicken or and I used to feel really frustrated because I used to be like, oh my God, um, there is more to Indian food than butter chicken. You know, it needs to be served a little bit more. So I came up with this idea of saying, okay, let's create a dish which is meat, potatoes, and cream. And so we took the rack of lamb, marinated that in mustard and sweet white wine, potatoes, uh, spinach, cream. And so the lamb popsicle. So then I would see people using their hands to eat the lamb. And I used to be like, oh my God, how can I tell people that they should use their hands? And so we were at a party one night and um, a good friend of mine had brought these lamb, rack of lamb, and you know they were grilling it. And, and I'm like, oh, you can eat it like a popsicle. And then it dawned on me that I need to call those lamb chops, not rack of lamb, but lamb popsicles and honestly we didn't have to change anything just that name called lamb popsicles took off <laughs> and it became the signature of uh, widges <laughs> which was a, a creation because it's delicious first of all no question about it but it is meat potatoes and cream something as simple as like steak frites potatoes steak mayonnaise sauce, cream, rich sauce. So you yeah. think about it. And then I realized that this is what everybody loves. We all love our meat, potatoes, and cream. And so the lamb popsicle is based on that. And it's it's something that has that put widges on the map. And uh, some of the food writers just loved it and talked about it. It almost feels like it was like a one-hit wonder song-wise, you know? <laughs> I think you've had a few more hits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it still on the menu? You can still order, right? It is still on the menu. And then we created something totally different um, at my Shanti, which is uh, Vikram's favorite snack, which is uh, like a little pizza. So I realized that people were loving the naan bread and the pizza and everything else. And so we put some mushrooms on the top and we put this lamb popsicle sauce on the top and we bake it in the oven with some fresh cilantro and green chilies. And suddenly that's taken off as Vikram's favorite snack. And it's like the most popular dish right now. And people just absolutely love it. But it's because, again, there is richness, there's flavor depth, uh, it's fulfilling, it nurtures you, and most importantly, it's really tasty. <laughs> that usually helps. <laughs> you know, and first of all, your nan bread, I remember having it. You took us back to your kitchen, you made some up fresh. It was phenomenal, first of all. It, nothing right. beats that. It was amazing. So I got to ask this other question to you, because it seems like you have a creative sense in you. you got the creative DNA that some of us have. Um, how important it is to be creative when it comes to this industry, especially especially food? It is extremely important. I mean, I, you know, it's like music. The notes are the same. The spices are the same. But what you do with it and how you play with it and where you take uh, that creativity is something that you have to sing and create your own music. I think people forget that creativity is the uh, seed of flourishing in life, of being who you are. And whether you're painting, whether you're playing music, whether you're uh, making clay pots, whether you're making uh, food, you have to be creative. And creativity is the only form of um, uh, of survival. Because if you're not creative, then your juices don't flow as well as they're supposed to. You know. So what inspires you? Chef, when you take into, I think, into, tra- I, think tra- I think traveling inspires me. I, I love to travel. I love to go to different parts. Sometimes I just like to, you know, walk around in the middle of uh, nowhere and and just like to get lost. And I'm not scared. I'm not worried about things like this. So I love to travel. I love to go to different, you know, restaurants and taste different foods and different passions of the chefs whether it's on the streets or it is on somebody's home or it's at great restaurants. 
I love to travel. And I think traveling is extremely important to broaden your horizons, to understand the nuances of, um, of why a certain culture does what they do and you know what the thought process is. And I think it's extremely important uh, for me to travel. And if I could travel, I would travel six months of the year, uh, just going to people's homes. And I, you know, I, I'm going again um, uh, back to Austria in in July to to uh, go to the Danube River, um, and then you know again in the fall somewhere. I, I just I think it's so important to travel. I mean, if you don't travel, you don't experience. Yeah, it, you truly are. And I know back in the day when I was with one restaurant group is that that was the thing. We went over three weeks to Europe, backpacked, you know, did a lot of the street food and you learn so much of it. Right. And it's amazing how you can take street food, bring it back, put it on a dish. Right. It, it's amazing what happens. Any favorite place that you've traveled? Well, I was uh, just in Guatemala in December, which uh, I absolutely loved. I think... Um, it's a beautiful country. It's a beautiful um, place. Antigua was just beyond my imagination. How cute and how gorgeous it was to see volcanoes like that. Uh, you know, some were live, some were not. Some were, you know, dormant. Um, to see food being made on the side uh, streets with, you know, the corn uh, breads or corn um, tortillas, basically, was unbelievable flavors. How rich that country is, as far as uh, heritage is concerned, was beautiful. Uh, before that, you know, obviously India is one of my uh, most beautiful destinations. I love going to, uh, but I also love, you know, Middle East. Like I, I love Morocco, for example, and I'm going to Egypt and Jordan in in the fall, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. And and hoping that I can come back and get inspired or be inspired uh, or be inspiring to somebody else and create something new and different and look, bring spices and ideas. You know, we're just going to be launching um, a food concept in Toronto called Bombay Frankie. Uh, and it's, it's like a burrito, a handheld burrito uh, with egg wash and spices in it. And um, I'm really looking forward to sharing that that's you know cool. that part of it, uh, but with little, maybe slight little different uh, spices and answers, you know, and ideas. And then we've also just launched uh, Widges for You Spice Line. Uh, oh, cool. uh, yeah, it's uh, widgesforyou.com. If you go on there, we have onion, ginger, garlic paste. We have some spices there as well. And so these are spices that have been sourced in India and brought over to North America. And uh, people will be able to enjoy it. But this happens because you love to travel, you know. That's very yeah. important. It is very important. It is very important. So, uh, Chef, what if, if you had something, because we've been through, it's been tough these last few years for a lot of people and a lot of restaurateurs out there. And, uh, you know, I, I've met with hundreds and hundreds of them over the last few years since we started this network. What would you say to anyone right now that's going to watch us later or tuned in today? to watch this that would keep them inspired and moving forward, right? Like, cause you're inspiring. Like I love talking to you yeah. love eating your food and eating there. That's, that's a whole different inspiration level. But what would you say to them right now? It's Asian heritage month. Want to celebrate it. What would you say to them right now to keep going? I would say to them is eat food from different parts of Asia. So, Eat Japanese one day, eat Chinese one day, eat Sri Lankan, Indian, different parts of Asian food, um, just because it's uh, Asian Heritage Month. Uh, and, and learn and travel to those places. Go to Vietnam, go to Cambodia, you know, go to Japan and, and visit those places um, and get inspired and come back and create and understand and, and build um, respect and tolerances towards uh, each other because if we don't build right now, now is the time for us to build this this understanding of each other's cuisines, cultures, music, um, and it's extremely important uh, that we do it. So what I would say to people is respect, break bread together with family, friends, um, and, and just love each other unconditionally. Yeah. 
you're, you're, is, that is just awesome. It's beautiful, Chef. And I want to respect your time today, but I can't thank you enough for jumping on our quick show here today. I just want we had a comment here. Is uh, Oh, yeah, people are sending some comments here. Uh, but just want to say thank you so much for what you do to the industry because you do inspire so many restaurateurs and chefs out there, especially in different cultures and different diversities and stuff like that because you support everything. And just thank you for doing that and being a part of this amazing industry in Canada and really leading the way. And and I can't thank you enough. And just awesome for you to be able to be on our show today. Thank you. And I and I would say to all the young chefs that are out there, um, put yourself on the plate. So if you are of Japanese heritage, if you are of Vietnamese heritage, do not forget your heritage. Do not forget where you came from. Take those roots and put it together and put yourself on the plate. It doesn't matter whether you were born in North America or anywhere else. Bring your passion of where you came from onto the plate. And I promise you, you will achieve what you have manifested in your life. Well said, Chef. Thank you so much. Namaste. All the, all the best. Thanks, everyone else, for joining today. And we'll chat with you next week. Thanks so much, Chef. Take care. All the best. Thank you.